Welcome back. If you've watched my last couple of videos, you know that my 11 year old son challenged me to play the adjustable rating bot on chess.com, starting with the lowest rating and working my way up until I lost. In the first video, I played the lowest couple of ratings and had a little bit more trouble than I thought I would. And in my previous video, I played the level four, which is beginner 700 rated, and I was winning until I messed up and drew the game, not leaving my opponent a legal move. I played it again and I beat it. So now I'm going to adjust it to the level five, which is, whoops, I skipped level five. Where's level five? There's level five. It's rated 850. I'm going to play that today and hopefully, and hopefully I'll win, but I don't know how much higher I can go because this bot here is just playing with a, a weaker and weaker version of the engine. I don't think it's actually using Stockfish. I think it's using Komodo. I'm not 100% certain on that, but my point is it's not like a lot of the regular bots, which are programmed to make blunders at certain points. It does occasionally make blunders, but I think that's just because it's just choosing a slightly weaker move sometimes. Honestly, I'm not 100% certain how it works, but I am going to choose it. I'm going to let the computer choose the colors and see if it gives me black again. It's given me black most of the time, and it did. All right, we'll play the Carol Khan defense and see how this goes. I'll play D5, and if you're new to my channel, I'm not a titled player or chess coach like a lot of other chess YouTubers. I'm, I'm just a random person trying to get better at chess. That seems like an odd move, but for all I know, it's completely normal. I'm going to get this knight out here. Well, I've played the Karakon, I think, hundreds of times now, and I don't think I've ever seen this exact position after four or five moves. Um, I don't, So I don't know if I'm supposed to take that. If I take that, then I lose one of my center pawns, which is, I guess, kind of my advantage right now. Not that I have an advantage necessarily, but I do have two center pawns. But if I move this up, they're just going to take it, and then I won't have a center pawn. So, yeah, I have no idea. I'm going to go ahead and take it, and then, uh, I guess, get this out and... Leave my light squared bishop back here, I guess, because they're they're already aiming here. So let's do that. Okay, and then we will get out the dark squared bishop and castle. I think is what I need to do. Well, they've checked, so let's trade off the light squared bishop, I guess. No, they ran away. Okay, um, then let's castle. That also seems like an odd move, but I'm not sure what I can do about it. I can play knight to c6 now, so let's do that. Not really aiming here because their queen is defending that. Okay, they've brought their bishop back. I guess I could take this pawn now, because if they take, then, then I'll get their bishop. But what they might do is take my bishop. No, if they take my bishop, I take their bishop, and then I'm defending my knight. So yeah, I, I think I can just get that pawn now, can't I? And I'll go up a pawn, I think. I, I might be drastically miscalculating this, but they, they did take that. Okay, so then don't I pick up a piece in addition to the, to the pawn? And then we're just going to trade queens here and so i'm ahead i think i'm up one pawn that also seems like a really odd move because you'd think you'd want to put your knight there but maybe they don't want to put their knight there um i am keeping them from castling so maybe they wanted to put their knight here i also might want to move this knight to a safe spot where no pawns can attack it and then and then attack their rook over there and slowly work my way down also this keeps their this knight from developing to c3 I'm going to put this bishop here, see if their rook moves up one. I assume that it will. And then I can put this knight here. If they take it, I'll take their knight with check. And I think I'm doing okay, because I'm still up that pawn. But I don't know if that's worth it. You know what? Let's do it. See if they take it, and I'll take back with my bishop here. Oh, they didn't take it. They just moved their rook over to threaten my rook, which is defended twice. So now I can just get their knight for free, I think. Maybe not free. Maybe they can trap it in there. Oh, they've they've let me have the rook here. Actually, they're letting me have the bishop because they'll take it's a rook trade. But and then I pick up the bishop, so I'm up seven points already. I think I'm doing okay. I want to be really careful and not stalemate like I did in that other game. So let's. I mean, they have legal moves as long as they have these pieces, so I shouldn't be too worried about that. I want to take this here, and I think I just messed up. Oh no, I thought I messed up because they could, you know, get one of those two pieces. But I think I would be able to just defend the knight in that case but now they've they've lined these two up on the same diagonal so i'm going to win the rook for a bishop and then get my other rook out here i don't know if it matters if i go to the d or the c file but let's pick the c file because it's a little further away from the king and then we'll check here and my bishop's guarding that square so i should be able to check here and drive their king forward i assume that's good for me or should i just pick off pick off another pawn I think I should just pick off another pawn because the the fewer pieces that they have, the easier it's going to be for me to checkmate here with the pieces that I do have. Okay, and I think what I want to do is bring my king, but first I want to put this pawn forward uh, to f6 so my pawns will be cutting off all of those squares, and then I'll start bringing my king here. 
Okay, I'm just going to trade for that because, again, the fewer pieces they have, the better it is for me. I don't want to check here just yet because then they go here and they're threatening both my pieces. Yeah, I'm still going to bring my king and see what they do. I assumed they were going to go for my knight, but they didn't, so I'm going to just keep bringing my king. Bring the king a little further to make this checkmating business easier. Well, now I can check here with the knight, but they could just come toward it or come... Uh, come up here to g4. What should I do here? Should I should I try to pick off their a pawn this way? I, I see. I don't want to get just trapped in the in the habit of taking all their pawns. I want to you know find the fastest the fastest mate here. But also I'm starting to kind of trap their king in this little area, and I don't want to do that because I want them to have legal moves after they run out of pawn moves here. Okay, so let's bring the rook over this way, and then I'll try to work it around here. And and okay, the king has come this way. All right, they're trying to do the stalemate thing like that other bot did. So I'm going to have to be careful, but they still have pawn moves. So I'm going to push this pawn. Now all of those squares are cut off from their king and I need to figure out a way to check them. I mean, I could just check them with the pawn, but then they move forward. And, and how do I get to it? If I check with F5, they have multiple moves at that point, including G5. But I think if they went to G5, I would want to bring my rook over here to H2 and, and prepare it. No, I was going to say, if I if I checked with f5 and they went to g5, I would bring my rook over here hoping to mate, but they can always escape out here, so I want to be careful and not do that. But they do still have pawn moves, and their king is pretty well hidden, so I'm going to let the king unhide itself by taking this pawn, and now they have to move the king or that f pawn. They moved the king. I think that's good, because they have legal moves, and I want to play f5 now so they can't come back up here. They could push a pawn, but then I can check and then their king has to go back. Okay, that's what I want to do. They can push the pawn or move the king here. They moved the king here. Okay, I'm going to check. They have to go back to the second rank. They did. And now I'm going to bring my king and try to checkmate them with just my rook. I don't need any of those other pawns. Gone that way, but that's okay, because I check they have to move back to the first rank, so that's what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to come forward and hope to get the opposition here before too long. I'm going to move over. If they come back, I'd have checkmate, but now they have to come back. It's the only legal move, and then now I have checkmate. Okay, that one turned out to not be difficult to get ahead. It was just difficult for me to win because of how well the king kept hiding itself. And, and of course, I know that the way that I got ahead was by the bot continuing to give me chances. I do have one game review per day. I'm going to use mine on this game. Oh, wow, this looks pretty good. I didn't have any mistakes, misses, or blunders, just a few inaccuracies. The bot had a few inaccuracies and one blunder. That was it. And their one blunder was right there. Uh, it says that was inaccurate, but I still had a very slight lead. And here, what the bot should have done was bishop to b2, which uh, I guess attack, uh, protects that pawn, or a normal developing move like knight to f3 or knight to c3. All those would have been fine. But the blunder was playing there. Okay, see, I didn't realize that. That was the blunder that put us down minus six, and I, oh, I should have checked first. Really? Now, I do know that if they had just blocked with the pawn or the bishop or the queen, then I would have just gotten the bishop. But if I had checked there and they had blocked with the knight, oh, then I would have just gotten the knight because they've already moved the, the B pawn. Okay, I get that. But I wasn't wrong about taking the pawn. It was counted as inaccurate because it wasn't the best move, but it was still minus four, and it was my second best move. I would have been okay if I had just played rook to c8, it says. But that was a blunder. Okay, so if I had played queen to a5, it says they would have blocked with the pawn and let me have the bishop? No. It says if I had checked a4, they would have blocked with the pawn and I would have taken that pawn with the knight. They would have taken my bishop and then I would have checked them on c2 and it's a double check because my queen would be in checking and the knight would be checking so they couldn't take the knight. They would move the king over and the little arrow doesn't expand the line like it used to. I've run into this several times. Used to, you could click that little arrow and the line would expand to show you what the next move was, but it doesn't show what the next move was. I assume I would take the rook with the knight, but I don't know. Yeah, I think what I did was a lot less complicated. I just picked up a pawn in the middle of the board. It was actually their best move to take it and my best move to take the bishop and their best move to take my queen and my best move to take back. Although it says, oh, the engine says it might have been slightly better to take back with the F rook. Very slightly better. I'm not sure why. Oh, I guess so I could have put the other rook on the C file. I would have had both rooks on open files. I, I guess that makes sense. And it also would have been just fine for me if I had taken the queen with the bishop. Okay, but this is fine. But I was only up a pawn at this point, so I'm surprised that I'm up minus four and a half. 
If you had asked me during the game how far ahead or behind I thought I was at this point, I might have said minus one or minus 0.5 because I knew I was up the pawn and am very slightly ahead on development. Maybe not slightly. I, I have three pieces developed, four pieces developed, and they have none. So maybe I could have been convinced I was up minus two, but it, it is very surprising to me that it's minus four and a half at this point, and the bot didn't make any more mistakes or blunders. See, I thought that that bishop move might have been an inaccuracy or at most a mistake because it just allowed me to pick up a pawn. And it says their best move here would have been knight to c3, and then I just would have dropped this bishop back, aiming over there, and they would have developed the knight, and I would have just taken that pawn, and they would have moved the rook over, and then I just would have brought the bishop back to f3. So I would have been up two pawns at that point. But they would have had a rook open and pointed at my king. And it says they would have put their rook up on g3, aiming at my bishop, and then of course the line doesn't expand, so I don't know what's next. So yeah, I, I still, even though I'm seeing it says minus four and a half, I'm still not sure how, being just up a pawn. I didn't think I was that far ahead until much later. Now down here, there's another series of inaccuracies by both of us. I'm going to guess that there was a much faster way to checkmate them, and I didn't find it, even though I was trying to. So I'm curious about here. Okay, it does say that I have a mating sequence here, and that I should have checked. Okay, see, I did wonder about that. I definitely should have checked on a, on E2, and it says they would have gone to f4, but, oh, they would have had to have gone to f4 because my knight and bishop are cutting off the entire d file as long as, with the help of my rook, which is defended by the bishop. And, of course, the rook cutting, yeah, okay, so f4 would have been their only move. And then I would have checked them with the pawn, which they could have just taken, but it says that they wouldn't. It says that they would move over. I don't know why. Oh, then they couldn't take it because the rook's defending it. Okay, so what I was supposed to try to do at this point was trap the king over here in these nine squares... And then, I guess, try to come in here somehow? And I don't know how I would have done that. I probably would have needed the knight's help at some point. Maybe the bishop's help at some point. Yes. Okay. Because this pawn would be up here. So once they moved over, the bishop could check them. And the pawn and bishop would be cutting off these squares. So then they would be trapped in a much smaller box. Actually, only four squares now that I think about it. Because my pawns are cutting off all of those. As well as this one. So that so I did... Oh, the, the line did expand. It just took it a second. Uh, I guess I was just impatient earlier. I thought it would expand when I tapped on it, but it expanded much later. But no, it doesn't say I would check with my bishop. Okay, so after I checked with the rook, they only have one legal move. That's in here. My best move by far is to check with the pawn. Now here they do have choices. G5, G4, or F5. Now if they went to F5, I would check with my bishop. But if they went to the one that's listed first, which is G5, then I would just bring my knight. I wouldn't check them. I would just bring the knight... I guess hoping to check over there or over here. But I could check them with F6, which gives them just a few choices. Guess four choices? And it says their best one would be H4. But then I would take this pawn, so that pins their knight. Their knight can't move now. Only the pawns and the king can move, and their best move would be to push a pawn. And I would try to come this way, aiming, I guess, for the F pawn. But they would play the F pawn, and I would take it. I wouldn't try to check here because they could come out, so I would take here so they can't come out. And they would play g5, probably. I still wouldn't check them. My best move would be bishop to d7, aiming there, which my rook wants to hit. And it wouldn't leave them a lot of legal moves. Their best one would be taking the pawn. And then I would check with the knight, because the pawn is guarding that square, so they can't come out. The bishop's guarding this square. The knight would be hitting this one, and my pawns are hitting those, so they would only have one legal move, h5. And then I take the knight, and that's it. It is still really impressive to me, even though I've lived in the computer age my entire adult life. It's still amazing to me that the computer could see that far ahead, which I definitely cannot. I did see that I could check here, but I didn't see a mate. And so I just thought, you know what, it'll be easier for me to mate if I start taking stuff. And that wasn't even one of my top three moves. Okay, so I'm guessing a very similar thing happened down here. Okay, here I had a mate in four, and I should have checked. And probably over here, a very similar thing. I had a mate in five, but I didn't play one of my top three moves. And then here I had a mate in eight, but I didn't play one of my top three moves. But here, I'm going to close that. Oh, now it won't close. It'll probably take like 10 seconds. Here it says I had a mate in 11, but I made it in, in five moves. So the computer must have helped me with this checkmate. My best move was actually to take the G-pawn, interestingly. Or play B5. Really? I would have had a mate in 11 if I had played B5. I just thought bring my king and try to checkmate with the rook. But when the king moved over, that took off quite a few moves off the mating sequence from 9 down to 6. 
And I realized, of course, that my king and their pawn are in the way here. So if I check, they have to go back. That was my best move this time. And when the king went back, now it's a mate in five. And it was actually best for me to play king to f3. Really? I've done this king and rook checkmate quite a few times. And I'm under the impression that that wouldn't have been a good move because I'm in the opposition already. And then their king just moves out of the opposition. That's why I picked e3, which is also pretty good. Because now if the king moves here, it's mate immediately. And if the king moves away, I just follow it. So when their king moved away, I just follow it. And it said it actually would have been better for them to play here. Okay, I get that. But if they had played there, I just would have taken it. And then they would have played here and I would have taken that too. Because they're not moving into the opposition or moving to the corner. Okay, I get that. When they move to the corner, this forces them to come back into the opposition where I can checkmate. Okay. All right, well, both the bot and I had a lot to learn in that end game, But I'm glad I won. They're getting tougher. Oh, and it does say Komodo here when you go to the analysis board. On the game board, it just says beginner 850, but on the analysis board, it says Komodo 5. So I'm guessing this is based on the Komodo engine. Regardless, I have beaten the first five levels of this spot, and in my next video, or one of my next videos, I will try the sixth level. Thank you for spending your time here, and I'll see you next time.